My name is Tobias Zobar Gurniak, uh, Romano Chavo Galiciaco, and um, I'm a Roman Gypsy and I came to England because of the racism we're facing back in Poland, back at home. Um, our mother was really worried for our lives um, as young men growing up. Um, there's one day where you grow up and you think, we're going to do something about it. So our mother was worried that that day might come. Um, and our city was getting worse and worse. It's getting more dangerous for us as young men. Um, so she realised that and she was really threatened for our lives. So she brought us over to England. But coming to Plymouth, um, to me, I was in the same place really, because it's not the white country, same people. I had the same perception. Um, till I went to school here, until I met people here, till I, I was given an opportunity to do something different, to be different. Um, my principles and, and, and my lessons in life, lots of them happened here in Plymouth. Um, met many, many incredible people, inspirational people, people that have kind of moved and taught me how to adapt. I think one of the greatest things about Roma people is that we adapt. We constantly survive. I mean, we survived for so many hundreds of years and we're still here today. So one of the things that I think I'm really proud of is being part of this culture of survival, this, this culture of adapting. We constantly adapt. And I think that's the beautiful thing about us. Um, through the lessons I think through life and what I've learned here is that you have to move on in time. Yes, it's good to have our foundations, to have a culture and have a history, um, but that history has to move. The history has to grow, we have to become better. And it's always about becoming better people. And that's something that really moved me when, um, and our culture is about God and family, that's the two main points for us. And I live by those things. I don't just say them. I've seen many people say them, not live by them. I wanted to be a person that has got these morals, it's got that honor, it's got that pride, that I live by this. I don't just say, and I won't tell you, I want you to tell me. I want you to see me in action, and then you to tell me, actually, you live by it. Oh, thank you for recognizing. And that's something that's important to me, for people to recognize that this is real. I'm not telling you a story. I'm living this story. This is real life. I think that's something that's really important to me, um, and to my family. I mean, I have six children. Um, every one of my children is amazing and different and crazy in their own little crazy way. They're all quirky. They've all got the personalities, which I love. Um, and one of the most important things I think for me is to encourage them to be strong, to be an individual, to be proud, to honour the family, to, to have that respect for one another, that unity that's, that's really important to us, that we're one. We call it Gorniaks, uh, which is my surname, which is my family surname. And many people to today, a lot of my kids' friends will be like, I want to be a Gorniak. Do you know what I mean? It becomes a thing now that we do and we are. And like, Whenever we teach our kids lessons, we said, would a Gorniak do that? Would a Gorniak think like this? What would a Gorniak do in this situation? Um, one of my children once um, seen a homeless person and they were really upset about it. I said, okay, you feel upset. What are you gonna do about it? Feeling something is one thing. Doing something about it is another. Many people feel, but don't act. We want you to act on it. Act on your emotions, act on your feelings. Act on your pain and sorrow and, and, and love and act on it. Don't just feel it. There's another thing of feeling and another thing of acting. So then um, the next day she went home straight away. On that day she went home. She looked for a piggy bank, the money she had, and she said, I want to give them something. I said, yeah, but is that enough? What can you do? And she just thought and thought. And then we done some research online, what's available in the city and stuff. So then they went to um, the food bank and the volunteer at the food bank. Because they need volunteers. So my kids volunteered at the food bank, they got involved in. It's all about giving them those opportunities. And you give children the opportunities, they grow to amazing people. My son said to me one day, um, Dad, I want to make money. I said, okay, cool. What you'll do, he's six years old. I said, what you, the best way I know to make money is to do something you love. Because you'll enjoy it more, you, you do more. Um, and he said, I like Pokemon. I said, okay, I said, so buying and selling Pokemon, small margin. I said, what can you do that people can't do? I thought, hmm, we do a Pokemon club. You run your own Pokemon club. So he did. So he started, we, me and him sat and designed a flyer, me and him advertised, told his friends, printed flyers, distributed them. Um, and he had like a whole trunk of cards that he wouldn't use because he said, I've got the best ones here. And these I just won't use, but I know lots of other kids would love them. 
I said, sell them. 50p each. I said, you're making a profit on each one you sell. 50p, and everyone will pay 50p. Because if not, you're gonna pay four pounds per pack and you don't know what you're getting. But this way, 50p and you know what you're getting, which is fantastic. So on this first a day, he earned himself 170 pounds. And we did that every month, once a month. Um, two, he got bored and he said, Dad, I don't want to do it no more. I said, okay, when you're ready, we do something else. I said, tell me. So now after Christmas, he's going to launch um, a little buy and sell it. So we're going to teach him how to buy and sell. So go buy stuff online and sell it and stuff like that. So just teach him how to make money and stuff. Um, then one of my other daughters, Lillian, uh, walked into a shop with me uh, to buy some clothes. And she said, Daddy, why is there only boys and girls clothes? Why is there nothing for me? You know, I'm a tomboy. I want to wear a little both. I said, I don't know. I said, what about you make your own? She went, yeah. So when she started on Clover Brand and she launched it this year. Um, and it's called Tomboy. Uh, so she launched her own hoodies and I taught her how to spray the hoodies, how to put the print on there, the vinyls, the heat pressing, um, how to advertise, how to sell it, what profit she makes, the hilarious thing was those days. I said to her, I'll buy the first for you so you can show people what you created. Um, I said, but on your next ones, when you buy them, um, this is what you have to pay the man for the hoodies and then all the materials and this is your profit. She goes, why am I paying him so much money? He's ripping me off. <laughs> I said, no, that's not how it works. I said, you have to pay him some money to make money. That's just how it works. But to her, she felt she was being ripped off. Why was she giving money in the first place? Um, which was brilliant. And that's what I want to instill my children, this business idea, this concept of trying and doing an opportunity um, and having fun with everything that we do because it's so important to have fun. Um, so with the dance element, um, it started all in my family and in my culture. It was just something that we did. Um, our family danced. There's some families played music, some families did other things, but our family, it was okay to dance. But it was very specific that you had to dance a certain dance style. Um, when I started hip hop, it was a bit like the family was like, whoa, what's going on, what are they doing? Um, but after a while, I fell in love with this culture, with this whole movement, with this whole freedom of creativity and just making it and just being in that space. It was just beautiful. I went to one of the sessions and we did some dancing together and then we joined a team. And from the team, we just grew and grew and grew. And then I ended up starting my own thing. I started my own company and started dancing and touring and, and doing lots and lots of different things. But everything was self-taught. Everything was from the streets, from the nightclubs, from the parties, from the events, from festivals. And, and I was really lucky that I was given such an amazing opportunity. I was gifted with this dance thing that I loved. And not only that, other people seen it and appreciated it, which was really nice, which I was really lucky. So my career in dance really started off when I started in this community centre. So we always used to dance in the subway um, at the bus station. Um, not a very clean place, but um, it was a place to dance. There was no rain, it was slippery sort of enough for us to dance on. Um, so we used to train there and dance there. And then one day I went to this youth club, one of my friends said, come with me to the youth club. So I went there and they had a nice space. So I, I just went there every week then to the youth club just to dance, just to practice. And then the, one of the youth workers said, would you mind teaching the kids? And we'll give you free space. I was like, brilliant, I'm always dying for space. And in England, it always rains, always bad weather. So we don't get much sunshine. So I was really, really, really excited for that. So then we started teaching and then another lady came in from another youth club just to have a look. And she went, why would you come to my youth club and teach? And I'll pay you. I was like, yeah, I'm getting paid. <laughs> I'm not gonna say no. Um, so I got really excited. And that's just how it built and built and built. I did a good seven to eight years work for free just to prove people what I can do and who I am and what I deliver. And, and lots of times it's hard because I have to prove so much more. Always have to prove so much more because of where I come from, because of my skin colour, because of the way I dress, because of the culture I'm representing, which is hip-hop. People think it's quite negative and drugs and violence. and. But if they had just understood the culture, not just the music genre, or just the kind of commercial genre of it, if people just understood what it stands for and what, what each person brings to it, because each person brings it up. Um, but it took me time to prove it to people. It, it took time to show people what I can do and how I do it and, and for people to build that trust. Um, but I think now I'm in an amazing situation where I can just walk in anywhere and people go, oh my God, it's Toby J. And it's so fantastic, I can walk into any school in the city or in the country and someone will know of my work, which is beautiful, which allows me so much more easy access to work and help people and to spread the positive stuff about hip hop. And I think the great thing about dance is this unique 
communication with human beings and nothing other can do than dance. Dance got this little thing and it's just unexplainable. It's, every one of us can dance. Every one of us in our hearts got this rhythm and every rhythm is different. Everyone's got this own little rhythms, little patterns, how you feel and listen and hear and express dance. And lots of people, I think, always look at me and go, oh my God, I can't do what he can't do, so I'm not a dancer. But every person can dance. Dance is movement, it's being able to move. So any shape or form, just head movements, shoulder movements, just even fingers, it's just, that's all dancing. A lot of people look at professionals and think, oh, that's why, that's real dancing. But to me, when I work with people, I say, no, discover your dance. Don't look at mine, be like me. I don't want millions of mini me's. I want millions of just unique individuals. Because that is what makes dance kind of really incredible, really, really beautiful. When you see 20 dancers trained the same, but none of them are the same. And that's one thing I'm really proud of, like in my company, in Street Factory. I have so many dancers that I've trained, not one of them is the same. And I love that, that every one of them has got the individuality, the personality, their quirkiness, their craziness about them. Um, it's beautiful. And it's really nice for me, so when other people come in and see it, and they go, none of your dancers are the same. They expect us when you run in dance school, do something, you know, everyone is pristine, everyone's the same and everyone fits in and everyone. But in my place, nobody's the same. My job is to discover you, show you who you are so then you can show that to the world. Um, it's about giving you that platform to do so. I think that's really, um, that's why I love dance. I just love dance because it gave me everything I have today. I wouldn't have my family, I wouldn't have my home, I wouldn't have my business, I wouldn't live the life I live today. Um, and I wouldn't be the person I am today without dance. So I'm really grateful to dance and grateful to hip hop for having an opportunity to be white. Um, so Street Factory, it's a CIC, which is a community interest company, uh, which is made not for profit. So all the money we earn is invested back in the business. Um, this is where I give back. I've realized that I could send money to other countries and help other people just by donating a little bit here, a little bit there. But I've realized I can do a lot more at home. And I've probably got people that are starving or hungry at home, on my doorstep. People that can actually help. People that can do something. People that can inspire and motivate and, and, and do something. So I think with the business is that me and my wife created this whole thing together. Um, and she is like amazing. What she does for me and for the company and how she works so hard for everything that we do today. It is just amazing. I can do it. I can do it without her. You're like, you know, I'm good at what I do, but I needed that other stuff. So me and her is that one circle that finishes the whole thing together, I think. But the company, I think, CIC for us is about giving back. It's, it was about me giving back to the community, to other people, because I was given it for free. Hip Hop gave me for free. There wasn't a pay, there wasn't a, a thing I had to do for it. It was just there. There you go. And I was like, wow, I want to share that with others. I want to give others the opportunity. By having a CIC, I get to do so. Which all my staff here, all my people who came from the programs, came from the roots, came through Street Factory. Now we'll be teachers, educators. We'll be traveling the country, traveling the world because of this. So as a company now, we're going to open the first hip hop theater in the country. It's going to be a dance, hip hop, theater, music, singing, rapping, poetry, graffiti, graf uh, graphic design, film, photography, anything you could produce, anything creative will be done here. We'll open the doors for you. We will assist you to guide you to achieve whatever that is that you want. But even if dance and this creativity wasn't what you wanted, it will give you an open mind. It will teach you to think outside the box. And talking about like respect and love and unity and stuff. Anyone that comes in contact with me, anyone I work with, I'll give you the same respect I'll give a little child. A child will get the same respect as you. Here, children teach. Little, little kids will teach. I'll say, you're in the front of the class today and you're teaching. They're like, what? I said, yeah, go and teach. I said, what am I teaching? Just do your thing. Just do your thing. Give them that power, that, 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 that feeling of being able to give something. And, and something that's really important to us is that we teach this thing was teach to teach. What I teach you today, I'd like you to pass on to another when you have the chance. So tomorrow when you see somebody, what you've learned today, share it. It's about sharing that on and passing on that knowledge. And what we believe that knowledge comes in all shapes and sizes. You know what I mean? If you came into a class and you didn't know nothing, and I've got a little five-year-old and he knows the foundations, I'll get him to teach you. So sometimes we get people who come in and they're like, what, this little kid's going to teach me? Yes, this little kid's going to teach you. Um, and, and that's the fun part about it as well. About young ones, they have this thing of, I'm not embarrassed. 
I'm not shy. And that's beautiful because we as older people, we are shy, we're embarrassed and we're conscious. Like everyone's watching, everyone's around me, do you know what I mean? But with little ones, they just don't care. They just go nuts and have the best time. So a lot of times we teach the, we get the little ones to teach the big ones that. Go back to being a kid again. Because we all are kids. We all want to see ourselves as adults and we've got responsibilities and everything else. But really, we're all just big kids. So in this space at the minute, we've been two years. Two years, but it's been two years all about the paperwork, the building, the, the, the organization, the partners, um, planning permission, designs. I mean, just all of that two years. And I have six months now to put the money together. And then the last um, 12 months, we've won like 20 or 30 awards for all our work, which is beautiful. It's beautiful that people now recognize what we do because it's kind of the perfect time with the build and everything else and all the support and everything else we need. Um, it's kind of falling into the right place. I believe it's just meant to be. It's just, that's the way I live my life. You know, if I'm meant to meet you, there's a reason why we met. And that's what I truly believe. And any person I work with, I think there's a reason for it. There's a reason why I'm just here at the minute, uh, in your journey, and you're here at my journey, where this just elevates both of us. And then we both continue our journeys, um, which is beautiful, which I think is, is really, really nice. Um, and I've been blessed in many, many journeys like that. And I've learned so much from so many people about meeting them. Um, for this young man who came to me and he rang me up he said <clears throat> Hi Toby, I'm getting married. Um, I would like you to teach me dance so I can dance for my wife, so I can show I can dance. I was like, dude, brilliant, sounds fantastic. I do this all the time. This is what I charge. Da -da -da. He went, oh, couldn't, couldn't afford it around right to the wedding. I was like, cool, what, what are you thinking? He goes, then we had more of a chat. He said, I'm blind. I went, what? So I'm thinking in my head, how would I teach you? Usually people watch me and they copy and he said, you know, you can teach me, you know, you can touch me and stuff. I said, dude, I ain't going touching you and stuff like that, do you know I me? Mean? And then we had a little laugh and stuff. But he had a great character, great personality. I said, you know what, hold on, let me call you back. I spoke to my wife. I said, babes, this is happening in this. Can we fit it in? Because I had a really busy timetable. She said, yes, you can. You've got that one day. And I had that one day a week I could give him. And I think we worked for like 15 weeks. And then what happened was when he came in, I thought, what a great experience for me as a teacher to learn to work with someone who's blind. But what I experienced for my children at the Street Factory, to not be afraid of people with disabilities, to accept it, help it, and be aware of it, and know how to work with them, which is really important. Because lots of young children never know, because like, what do you say? How do you say it? What do you do? It's all these questions. And what was beautiful with Mike as a Street Factory, I said, just ask, just be. You're kids, you're only learning. I'm learning. I said, I don't know everything, <clears throat> but I'm learning constantly. So this was an amazing experience. So at the end of the whole thing, two of my dancers decided to get involved and they danced with him. So they done, they done a routine. So on the day we went to the wedding, he said, ladies and gents, you know I love to dance, but I can't dance. But I've got someone who can. Put your hands together for Street Factory. So two of my dancers went in, bah, 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 really going crazy, like showing up. And, he got, and then he took the mic and went, hold on, who says I can't dance? And he dropped the mic. And he walked through, we had all the steps counted and everything. So he knew four steps forward, push the boys, two steps after and everything. So he did it perfect. So he was dancing, leading the boys. So the boys are behind him, he's leading the routine. So the boys keeping up with him now. So super, super, and then at the end, he had his own little thing. So the boys moved away and then he had to do a moonwalk backwards. But what happened was whoever laid the tables out, they didn't move that table far enough. So we planned that he had that much space. So he's moonwalking, but he moonwalked into a table which was perfect because everyone will laugh their heads off because then everyone realized, oh yeah, he's blind. Because of that split moment in time, everyone forgot that he was blind. Everyone just seen this dude dancing and everyone was just like, wow. But the stuff he did was really good. And everyone just forgot at that moment in time that this man was blind. Till he hit that table and everyone just cried with laughter. It was perfect. Um, and that was an amazing experience for me. And I think I had many, many experiences like this because of dance. I met amazing, amazing people in the world. Um, and I'm blessed that dance did it for me. And that this company that I'm building is going to give opportunities not just to me, but many, many other people. And it's about bringing people up. That's our biggest, biggest model. Lift them up. Give them the platform. Give them a chance. Because everyone deserves one. For the Roma community, uh, my dream is to become Gitana one. All of us to have this love and respect for one another. Because a culture is built on respect, and built on love. 
what a mother and father do for the little ones. How much they sacrifice, how hard they've worked. And it's about building our communities and our lives on that. Yes, we have laws that we have to live by and rules, and, but sometimes they're outdated. And it's sometimes about living now. And sometimes about listening to children. Sometimes it's about moving forward, not staying where we were 50, 100 years ago. But that's what sometimes feels like. I would love my people to grow, love my people to move, love my people to succeed. I love my people not to struggle no more. I love my people to live fulfilled lives. And I love that children, gypsy, Romani children, can walk in with their head up proud, proud to say, I'm a gypsy, I'm a Romani. That is so, so beautiful. And that's my biggest dream. Like, I know my children have that, but I work with many children who don't. And I think that would be one of my biggest, biggest things for the world. If our own new gypsies to be proud of who we are and to stand together with one another and to be Kitana.